this is John Cola with OKRaw.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you, and we're coming at you from LA, Los Angeles, man. Hollywood, you know, all that jazz. And what we're gonna do in today's episode is we're gonna talk about farmers markets, my two favorite farmers markets in all of LA County. Sorry, I'm not visiting any other counties this time, and the two farmers markets that I like is for a very important reason, because I seem to find the best deals there, and there's a wide variety of produce. In any case, before we get into this video today, I want to talk about farmer's markets. I always encourage you guys to shop at local farmer's markets whenever possible. And unfortunately, not all farmer's markets are created equal. Here in California, you know, they have certified farmer's markets, which means if something's being sold at a farmer's market, then it needs to be grown in California and it's going to be sold uh, from the farmer directly or an agent of the farmer. So, you know, many states that I've visited, you know, especially down in the south, they have farmers markets, but what it is is that they just have people going down to the wholesale place, buying a bunch of stuff, or going to the wholesale auction, buying a bunch of stuff, and then selling it. And they didn't even grow it, and they charge a lot of money for it, and it's not even that high of quality. So, you know, depending on where you live, you may or may not want to visit farmers markets. I always encourage you guys to check out farmers markets and ask a lot of questions. I'll post a link down below the video on questions you want to ask the farmer to determine if they're growing high quality food or not. That being said, farmers markets are not always the cheapest place to buy produce. You know, if you're buying, you know, imported conventional produce, it may be less than the farmers market, but I always encourage you guys to vote with your dollars. Keep your dollars locally in the local community and support companies and farms that do not spray toxic pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and uh, use synthetic fertilizers, which are, in my opinion, not good for the health of the planet or the people of the planet. So with that, let's go ahead and get into today's video, my two favorite farmer's markets in LA. So my first favorite farmer's market here on Saturdays in the Los Angeles area is the Torrance Farmer's Market. I know many of you guys are saying, John, isn't Santa Monica better than Torrance? Cause I mean, I've been to the Santa Monica one on Saturday. It's definitely a good market, but I find it's more of a, you know, expensive market. People charge more money there and there's not quite, I mean, there's a lot of variety, but I just like this one better. It's a lot larger, a lot more laid back and a lot better prices. So the address here is on Crenshaw and Jefferson Streets uh, near Plaza del Amo. And it's a nice uh, big parking area. That's the other thing. In Santa Monica, and it's a good farmer's market in Santa Monica, but there's definitely better parking here and better facilities that handle the volume of people that come through. So what we're gonna do next, actually, we're gonna go in the farmer's market and give you guys a quick tour, show you guys some of the cool things at the farmer's market and why I like farmer's markets much better than I like buying things at grocery stores or even health food stores. So one of the tips I wanna give you guys when you come to a farmer's market is get here early. Many farmers may have a limited quantity of certain items and then they may sell out. And once they're gone, they're gone. So if you get here early, you're sure you're gonna get first dibs and first picks on all the produce. When buying things by the each, obviously you wanna buy the bigger ones because it's a much better deal. So my main plan on farmer's markets and how I work them is when I get there, I do like a walkthrough. So I kind of go to every booth, see what they got and kind of like scope out the prices like oh this guy has avocados for this much this guy has avocados for this much but also on the initial run through i'm also scoping out like oh this guy has some avocados that i've never seen before in my life and he doesn't have that many so i'm going to buy them now instead of getting on the second round after i've compared all the prices another reason why i like the farmers markets is for all the different fresh foods and hopefully riper foods and you'd buy at the grocery store i mean when they buy things for standard commerce they got to pick things early so that they don't crush and you know get messed up and so that they'll survive shipping here at the farmers market some of the crops may be have maybe even picked that morning and uh, actually this is definitely a good crop to buy at a farmers market it's right here these are actually fresh guavas fresh guavas definitely one of my favorite foods when you're picking out a guava what you want to do is you want to look for a nice brilliant color here and uh, besides the color it should also smell fragrant pretty much like a bunch of flowers and uh, so the green one here is not quite as ripe, although still edible. This one's a nice, uh, delicious color, making my mouth water right now. It's uh, nice and pink on the inside, and uh, man, has a nice fragrant scent. Man, guavas are the bomb. Now the thing to remember on guavas is, you wanna always buy local guavas. You see guavas for sale at a grocery store. In most cases, they are being imported, and due to fruit flies and bug infestations that guavas get, they're now being irradiated. Uh, before eating any guava, I definitely recommend breaking it in half and seeing if there's any 
uh, you know, maggots or anything inside because I've eaten probably a few maggots in my day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys what a ripe guava looks like. I mean, even better than the looks is the smell. Wow, I mean, it just smells like flowers. It's so cool. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. And look, this is so awesome, man. This is nice, dark, rich, pink, fleshy color. And yes, you can eat the skin at all. Mmm, that's the best California grown guava I've had in a long time because actually I rarely get any. It's quite a treat. Mmm. As a kid, we used to go to Hawaii a lot and get guava juice. Well, what's better than guava juice is fresh guavas. And uh, you can get these guys for a limited time while they're in season at the Grail Ranch. They have citrus and avocados and a lot of other good stuff here. Found yet another cool fruit here at the farmer's market. These are called uh, horn melon or huano, also known as uh, jelly melon, and these are basically a relative of the cucumber. And uh, they say they say they hear that they have like a banana flavor. So I'm uh, definitely interested in trying these guys and seeing what they taste like. They're 250 a pound. And uh, this uh, at the farmers market, you're gonna see a whole bunch of different varieties of all kinds of different cool stuff, all fresh picked and all ready for you to go. Definitely the best place to buy your organic produce to eat. So if you're a fruit maniac like I am, you definitely want to come out to the farmer's market. I mean, if you just go to the grocery store, you're only going to get a couple varieties of grapes. Here they have at least six varieties of organic grapes. Now besides organic grapes, they got things like nectarines and uh, pomegranates and persimmons and even organic figs. Yum. Another really cool fruit that I found today is this guy right here, the dragon fruit. Look how colorful these guys are. They're amazing. And uh, you open them up, you cut them open, and then inside it'll kind of look like a kiwi texture. It has little seeds. It'll either be like white, yellow, pink, or red. And uh, they're quite good. I love them a lot, but it's hard to get a good one. When you're picking a pitaya or dragon fruit, you want to get one that has a nice, dark, rich color to it. Um, they got some ones here that are actually quite like a little bit too young. See the difference in the color? You want nice, vibrant colors. They're always going to taste better. Try to get the yellow ones, they're quite, they're the sweetest actually. So when you come to the farmer's market, there's gonna be all kinds of new varieties of things that you haven't eaten. I mean, we all know about avocados and they got the standard Haas avocados. But one of my favorite kind of avocados are right here. These are known as the reed avocados. They're actually quite large and these are super creamy, super delicious. In addition, did you know that mangoes grow in California? These are California grown fresh mangoes that are not hot water dipped. They have a much better flavor, and when you pick them, you want to pick them a little bit on the firmer side. If they're too soft, then they could actually be fermented inside. So as much as I love farmers markets and supporting local farmers and getting my fresh fruits and vegetables here, what's even better and what I like to do more is actually grow my own fruits and vegetables. So here at the farmers market, you can buy plant starts, and actually that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to buy a whole bunch of plant starts so that I can grow my vegetables. Vegetables are far easier than growing fruit trees, although they do have peppers and tomato plants today. So even a better deal than just buying the single plants, you can get these guys, which are six packs. So these six packs are $1.50 each or four for five. And literally if you plant some of these guys, like the kale and the collards and the broccoli, they're gonna produce leaves for you through the fall and the winter season. And if you have food to eat out of your garden, I mean, think about it. At some of the market booths here, you could just buy six leaves of kale for a couple bucks. But if you buy the plants and plant them, you could literally feed yourself for a whole season with just a small investment. One of the reasons why I like the farmer's market is because things are way fresh picked, check it out. This is fresh ginger, so fresh it's even on the stock. This is the rhizome here that you would eat, and this is actually young baby ginger. This is really cool. Find a nice piece that actually has a lot of roots on it. You may be able to just plant this and grow more ginger. That's totally cool. I want to encourage you guys to always eat live food, things that are fresh. I mean, look, this is how fresh ginger looks, not the dried up stuff you guys get in the grocery store. I'm so excited, I'm gonna to get to share one of my favorite fruits in the whole wide world with you now. Actually, it's right here, and most people, it's really sad, don't know about what they are. They're actually called uh, jube jubes, and that's what these guys are, also known as Chinese dates. Now, when they grow on the tree, they kind of look like this, and uh, pretty much kind of looks like an apple. And if you cut it open, uh, when they're in this state, that's pretty much how they taste. Now, these will also basically sun dry on the tree or off the tree. When that happens, they're gonna kind of change color and get to this color. And both these guys can actually be eaten when they're hard or getting a little bit soft or dried. But the best way to eat them is actually, they don't have any here, but they're next door. It's when they're super dried, and that's when they're known as a Chinese date. These guys are far better, uh, more healthy in my opinion, and taste way better than just the standard, you know, dates that you get from the grocery store, the Chinese date. So let's check out the next booth and show you with you guys the 
super dry, delicious jujubes. Jube All right, so now we're at the booth here of uh, Savu Subtropicals out of Fallbrook, and they got my favorite ones. They got the jujubes. Jube. So these guys, you can see when they're large and unwrinkled, that's when they're starting to dry out. And then they got ones in different stages when they're getting a little bit, you know, more wrinkly in here and more shriveled up. If we come over to this side, they got the super ones that are super dried. And uh, these are just sun dried, so there's no heat processing. What you want to do when you're looking for a dried one, you want one that's kind of like, you know, not super hard. You, it should still be a little bit moist and a little bit chewy. So I'm going to go ahead and try to pick out. Oh, here's a, here's a pretty good one right here. It's a pretty dried. And then check this out. We're going to bite into it. On the inside, it's like a nice doughy consistency. So if you don't eat cakes anymore, this is the closest thing you're going to get to a cake. It's nice and spongy on the inside with a really sweet flavor. Oh man, these are my favorite dried fruits in the whole wide world, especially when they have a little bit more water content and not super dried. You can also find these many times in Korean supermarkets and whatnot, but they're way super dried. Or Asian markets, uh, Chinese dates, but this is the best way to get them right from the farmer's market, sun dried. Still a bit moist. All right, so now we're at the booth of uh, Yasutomi Farms. Definitely my favorite place when I'm in town to buy my greens. All their greens are grown hydroponically, but more instantly and more interestingly, they actually have uncommon and unique Asian greens that you guys probably never tasted. Actually, I'm excited to share with you guys one of them today. It's actually called the water spinach, also called Kang Kong. Most people don't know what this stuff is, but it's super delicious. Basically, it's like a green vegetable, like a dark leafy green. Tastes very similar to lettuce. Has a nice mild flavor, really good. I could totally just mow on this as a salad. I'd actually probably need about two or three of these as a salad. Just chop it up, put it in a bowl, make a nice uh, dressing, maybe like tomatoes, blend with some mac nuts. Super delicious. Definitely a good green. Also, they have uh, fresh greens like watercress. Watercress is a 1,000 on the Andy scoring system. That means it's the mo one of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. When was the last time you ate watercress? And the cool thing here is if you see these little uh, sponge things on the bottom, that means this plant is still alive. No better way to get your food than when it's still living instead of it being cut and then you eat it. The last thing I want to share with you guys here at the farm booth is are these guys. These guys are known as Japanese cucumbers and these in my opinion are even better than English cucumbers. They don't have that bitter cucumber taste. They're nice, sweet and mild and super delicious. I could just eat this whole bag for lunch. Now we're at a Burkhart Organics and they have a few things that I really like. Number one, they got those same fresh uh, jujubes. -jubes. But um, what I'm looking forward to is uh, when they dry these guys. They have some incredible dried jujubes -jubes here that I like to stock up on uh, when they're available. And they'll definitely store for a while. It's always best if you eat them sooner rather than later so that they don't dry out too much. Because right when they're just still a little bit moist, they're super good. The other thing that I always recommend you guys uh, eat when super moist, right here, they got fresh sugar cane. So I'm not an advocate of eating sugar crystals, but gnawing on some sugar cane is a totally different story. It's nice and water rich and more out of the plant and more minimally processed. I mean, literally you could take this if you're hardcore and just start chewing on it. The outside's really hard, so that's why they usually strip that down and you just uh, chew on the right, nice middle. Sugar in this whole format, it's much better food because it's not refined, it has more vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and more importantly, the enzymes and the water content. We are 60 to 75% water content, and when you're eating foods that are dehydrated, it's going to dehydrate you and steal your water from you. So uh, eat water rich instead. Once you cut it down, it's going to basically look in a little pieces like this, and the best juices in the whole world are our teeth. Just simply take and put in your teeth, in your mouth. Mm. Chewed up, you're gonna release all the delicious water plus some sweetness, and it's a very mild sweetness, sweetness because it's diluted with so much water. When you remove the water, it concentrates the sweetness. Then you're just gonna spit out a little bit of pulp. So that's what came out, that's what went in. The difference is water content, <laughs> sweetness, nutrients, and minerals. So, another cool thing here at Burkhart is the pomegranates. I mean, you guys might just be familiar with the standard red pomegranates, and they got, you know, there's different kinds of pomegranates, different varieties, much like there's different varieties of apples. And most people are just familiar with the standard, you know, uh, red pomegranate on the inside. 
that kind of has that astringent, maybe a little bit bitter taste. They're not su known as a super sweet fruit. But here at Burkhart, they have a special variety. It's these guys right here. These are rare white pomegranates. These are white on the inside. Let me go ahead and show you guys what these guys look like. So here's more of a standard variety of the pomegranates. Nice deep red, but check this one out. This is the white one. This white one, literally, I mean, we open this up. It's really light colored. We just take some of these seeds off, pop them. Mmm. No astringency, very little bitterness. Nice and sweet. One of my favorite things to do with the pomegranates is actually just put it in an orange press. I like to use the Olympus citrus press to juice pomegranates, make some delicious pomegranate juice. These white ones are definitely the bomb. One of the coolest things I like about farmer's markets is all the free samples. So you can literally come here in the morning without eating breakfast and I recommend waking up in the morning drinking some water first and then come to the farmer's market and pig out on a fruit salad. I rarely eat fruit salads except when I come to the farmer's markets and they got free samples. So today what we're going to sample are these guys. We got some uh, Ken's Top Notch Produce Kaiho Grapes. These are a special variety of Japanese grape actually that are quite sweet and uh, they're seeded. So when buying grapes, I always recommend you guys get seeded grapes. The seeded grapes have more nutrition than the unseeded grapes be simply because the seeds have a lot of nutrition including antioxidants in them. Wow, it's quite sweet. Next door, they have something pretty rare. They got organic Concord grapes. The Concord grapes are once again a seeded grape. These are organic, good price here. It's a $2.50 a pound, $5 a box for two pounds. Grapes, definitely one of my favorite foods. Mmm, wow. Quite sweet. I could definitely make a mono meal out of them, and you should too. Right now, we're in one of my favorite booths here at the farmer's market. This is actually the Bautista Family Organic Dates. And they have a lot of cool varieties of dates that you guys probably never tasted. I think it's a travesty when you go to your local health food store, you go buy dates. Normally, you're getting one of two varieties. You're either getting Deglet Nors, which are the dry date, or you're getting Medjool dates, which are known as, you know, what dates are. But you know, for me, medjool dates are like the bottom of the pit. They're like the dates that I like the least because they're the sweetest, they have a pretty much nondescript flavor, and they're so common. I like to eat uncommon foods. So as you guys can see, they got actually a number of different medjool dates, and they're de definitely good here. Uh, they're different grades. In addition, you guys can see here, these are the medjools, simply the best, and they're large. I mean, these are some large, plump, Medjools that are super fresh, unlike the ones you get, you know, at a health food store that are all dried up and maybe not so good. But besides the medjools, there's many other hundreds of varieties, if not thousands of varieties of dates in the world. And actually, they have uh, six other varieties here besides the medjools. They have these guys, the Kadraris, and the Kadraris are five dollars a pound. This is by the pound if you buy them by the pound, and medjools are eight. So that tells you the price difference. I mean, you could get more dates if you get a different variety. And then they got the number ones, which are the top grade, and then they got the number twos. And the number twos are a little bit drier, you know, nothing wrong with them, and they're definitely good, and you're gonna save even more money. They're 450 a pound. In addition, they got the Halawi dates. The number one Halawis are 450 a pound. The number twos are four dollars a pound. And these are nice moist dates. These are not like anything you'll get at the health food store or grocery store. Mmm, nice high water rich content. Really delicious, too. They also got the honey dates, one of my favorite dates in the world. They got the number ones and number twos. Don't be afraid to get the number twos. Nothing wrong with the number twos. They're perfectly fine. You're going to save a little bit more money so you even afford more dates. But finally, they got these guys, the fresh ripe barhi dates. These have to be my absolute favorite date in the world. You could actually eat these guys in the claw stage when they're actually right on the vine and kind of yellow. Uh, these are just starting to ripen up. And the reason why I like these is because these literally get like a syrup consistency. Once they ripen up, I mean, you can see the oozing. I mean, these guys are literally oozing because they're that water rich. Inside, they're so gooey and chewy. 
This is literally like eating maple syrup. I mean, if you've never experienced the fresh bar he dates, you gotta get them. They're so delicious. All right, so there's two more varieties of dates I wanna share with you guys today, and these are more of the drier dates. I personally like the wetter dates. They're quite good. And if you get wet dates, these fresh dates, you need to store them in the fridge for the maximum amount of time. Otherwise, if you store them out of the fridge, they may actually ferment and go bad. Once again, I wanna encourage you guys to eat foods that spoil and go bad, like fresh dates. These guys, on the other hand, will store a longer period of time, and the price reflects that. They're a bit drier. They're only actually 350 a pound. We got the Zahidis here, and you guys just saw me eat that other one that was like super moist. We'll go ahead and bite this one open for you guys. And this is nice and dry. I mean, it's totally dry. And this is a good thing. This may be good, you know, better for use in recipes, but it's definitely good if you want to make like a date sauce and instead of using honey or even agave. Just take some of those fresh, like juicy dates with some water, blend it up, it'll make a nice, delicious date sauce. I recommend adding fresh dates instead of white sugar to your smoothies if you need some sweetness, because this is sugar plus vitamins and minerals and enzymes and stuff in it. Mm, so good. The last kind of date I want to share with you guys today is right here. These are the Deglet Noors. The Deglet Noor dates are known as a bread date or a dry date. And these guys are quite dry. They're probably a little bit drier than those Zahidis I just had. I mean, each date, it's hard to pick just one. I'd love to go on seven hot dates. But it's hard to pick just one. I mean, I'd say get a variety pack and get one of each and find out which one you like, because I have my own preferences. I think my favorite ones are the, uh, the barhees that are wet. Those are definitely my favorite. But I love all dates. Mmm, this one. This one's actually quite dry. But this one kind of is like, maybe tastes a little bit like peanut butter, a little bit like bread with honey overtones. Mmm, super delicious. So the best deal on dates here is if you buy them in bulk. So if you're coming to a farmer's market, you could buy them in a four pound bag like this. It's four pounds for 12 bucks. So that's only three bucks a pound, definitely a good price. And if you eat dates like I do, you're gonna wanna buy in bulk and save some money. Now, if you're unable to make it out to the farmer's market, you guys are in luck because they ship. They ship anywhere in the U.S. You can check them out and order online at 7hotdates.com. And if I just had uh, one hot date, I'd probably be happy. All right, so I loaded up on some fresh produce, but more importantly, fresh green still alive that we're going to plant in the garden to eat during the fall and winter time. I want to encourage you guys to grow your food, especially if you're into eating fresh fruits and vegetables. I actually teach how to garden. It's very simple, very easy. Anyone can do it. You want to check out my other website, growingyourgreens.com, and learn how to garden today. So next, we're going to be off to the next farmer's market, one of my favorites in Southern California. All right, so now we're at my second favorite farmer's market. I don't know which is first and second, but these are my two favorite ones. It's the Hollywood Farmer's Market. It takes place here every Sunday, 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, parking the area is mostly metered. If you get here before 11 a.m., it's free parking. So I definitely encourage you guys to get here early instead of later. If you get here early, you're gonna get first dibs, which is really nice. If you get here late, I'd recommend coming, you know, around noon or so, because then you get the going home deals when people are trying to get, get rid of stuff, and you definitely get better prices. What we're gonna do next is actually go around the farmer's market and share with you guys some of the vendors and some of the um, people here selling some cool products that you might even be able to buy from home. One of the things I love is heirloom tomatoes and the farmer's market, you're gonna find the freshest picked, ripest heirloom tomatoes. It's really sad if you go to buy heirloom tomatoes like in the store, they're picked too early, they're not optimally ripe. I mean, these guys are ripe and ready to eat. I always when picking tomatoes, I want you to encourage you guys to get ones that have nice, vivid, vibrant colors. That's definitely a good key to the ripeness. Plus you want it a tad bit soft, but not too soft. You don't want it too hard either. And uh, they got different varieties of heirloom tomatoes here. Here's one variety, it's actually called the Japanese tomato, Mora Taro, and these guys are actually uh, low acid tomatoes. So if you don't like a lot of acid in tomatoes, those Japanese ones are quite good. So besides the tomatoes, they got some amazing lettuce. Let's go take a look at some of this uh, lettuce and uh, share with you guys why I like this style of lettuce rather than the ones you get at your supermarket. So they have all different kinds of lettuces here. I love these little baby lettuces. Baby lettuces are my favorite ones to eat. These guys are actually only $2 each. They're nice and tender. When you buy smaller greens, more tender greens, they're easier to chew, they're easier to digest, and they definitely taste a lot better to me. Now besides just buying the babies, and these are maybe some uh, little gems or baby gems, they have all different varieties. So actually, at this uh, farm, it's called the Garden Of, is the name of the farm. They have over 20 different varieties of lettuce, and I know many of you guys might have either 
red leaf, green leaf, or romaine, but there's so many other kinds. Check this out. Over on this side, they got these uh, Salanova lettuces. These guys are absolutely beautiful, and check out literally, you know, dozens and dozens of little baby leaves that you're gonna be able to munch on and eat. I mean, I could easily eat like three or four of these for dinner. Picking out one of my favorite fruits here. These are called uh, white sapotes. And um, one of the secrets is actually if you're at the farmer's market, they have a whole bunch in the front, but they're kind of looking messed up. So you ask them, hey, do you got any in the back? And they said, yeah, come on back. So now I got the prime pickings, man. These guys are just about ready to eat. And uh, we're gonna bring these later to a fruit luck today, and we're gonna have a lot for later to eat. I mean, if you go to a store and you find these, you might be lucky to find them for $3, $4 a pound. Here, they're $1.25 a pound, and they're just about ripe. Uh, that being said, it's important when you're picking these guys out, they are very soft. Uh, you don't, don't want to really store them in plastic bags because if you filled this bag up, they'd get all mush. So I'm actually filling like five different plastic bags up, each with a few so that they don't mush all themselves. And then once we get to the car, we're going to separate those out in boxes so that they can't like really mush around in the bag because I've you know bought a lot of fruit before and put them in bags and smushed it all in there and then they get all nasty later. That's definitely a good tip. All right, so besides just the fresh fruits and vegetables that I'm buying here at the farmer's market, another thing I like to get uh, many times farmer direct is nuts and seeds when possible. So many of you guys know that on almonds, even raw almonds sold in the ball bins at your Whole Foods or health food store have been pasteurized if they're from California. So whether they're steam pasteurized, which probably isn't so bad, but it's still cooking your stuff, or worse, chemical pasteurization, which is not good in my opinion. That's why it's good to come to the farmer's market to get your nuts direct from the farmer that grew it. So you guys can see here they got uh, raw pecans, raw walnuts, raw unpasteurized almonds, as well as pistachios, all kinds of cool stuff here. And the cool thing is, these guys are $8.50 a pound for the raw unpasteurized almonds. But more importantly, these guys said that they'll also ship these if you need to buy them and get a good deal. Definitely ask them questions about how their growing practices are. They don't, they're not organic, but they don't spray on the trees and they use organic fertilizers whenever possible. So that's definitely good enough for me. Uh, to learn more about them, to order, you want to visit their website. AvilaandSons.com is the website. Personally, I don't tend to eat a lot of almonds or nuts, maybe a handful or maximum two a day. I think a diet is best to focus around fresh fruits and fresh vegetables the best. So another thing I like about farmer's markets are the free samples. And check it out right here. We got some uh, samples of olives. So I'm not an advocate of eating olive oil. I like to eat whole olives. And uh, these olives are very special because most olives can be cured in salt or like a brine with you know, chemicals that you probably don't want to put in your body. These ones are simply cured in oil with no salt. So people that are trying to you know, stay low salt, these are definitely good olives. Mmm. They taste like an olive taste. They kind of have that little bitterness, but it's really fatty and rich. Tastes really good. Now, when buying olives, I always encourage you guys to get the darker olives you guys can see here. These guys are ripe, the purple ones. I'm not a fan of the green olives because the green olives on the tree generally will turn into a darker color. Next, I'm gonna show you guys these olives and uh, where you can actually purchase these because they will do mail order. So these are the olives I like right here. They're actually called the black Greek olives. These are cured in only extra virgin olive oil with nothing else. If you want to get them, you want to contact uh, this person here at Marvin's Organic, 818-390-4717, and tell them John from OK Raw sent you. These are my different favorite olives that I've ever tasted. Once again, no salt in them, rich, delicious flavor, like an olive should taste. One of the things you might be wondering about is my cool bag here. Check it out. I always recommend you guys bring like a reusable bag to farmer's markets and I like this one a lot because it's actually nice and large. But more than that, it's actually insulated. So it's actually called the Giant Flexible Cooler. And it's uh, insulated so it's going to keep your produce cool, especially in nice hot days. Maybe uh, put a couple bottles of water in the fridge or freezer and get it cold and put it in here and this could be like a little cooler thing. And so I got this actually at Costco. I think for a really good price, so I could always reuse it, and I could also be styling. So whenever I'm walking around, I'm always like scoping out not just uh, fruit and vegetable places like vendors, but also trees, man. Check it out right here. 
We got some nice banana trees. Technically, they're not trees, but they look cool. No bananas on them right now, but hey, check it out. It looks like they fell down. Got some little baby bananas. I always encourage you guys to grow your own food. These guys are probably never ripening up. It looks like these guys fell down too uh, prematurely, but definitely a good centerpiece for your table. <laughs> now we're gonna talk about kind of probiotics. Basically, it's fermented vegetables. These are definitely one of my favorites. I like to include a little bit every day or every other day in my diet. And uh, what they got here, we're at uh, brassica and brine. These are uh, nutrient-dense living foods. And these are basically just sauerkraut. So this is a traditional sauerkraut. They got a kimchi one, which uh, has different uh, vegetables in there, fermented. And they got the four thieves, which actually has some different herbs in there. So I definitely like uh, these sauerkrauts here. They come in the glass jars. And they add a tad bit of probiotics. I mean, our bodies are made up mostly of bacteria and we need the beneficial bacteria to help digest our food and for immune function, which is what I hear. I definitely like to make my own sauerkrauts, but also sometimes when I get lazy, I like to buy and just have it available. I find that just a little scoop in my uh, fruit nut-based dressing just really brings it up a notch and brings some nice flavor, plus a little bit of natural uh, sea salt that's in the product. These products are not too salty, they just have enough salt to ferment it, and you gotta watch out when buying a lot of sauerkrauts. They may have way too much salt. These ones I like because it's generally lower salt, just enough to make it work and make a nice fine product. And today, I'm gonna try a sample. Okay, what would you like to try? So I'd like to try the superfood kraut today. Okay, so this superfood kraut has a bunch of superfoods. It has corella, spirulina, plantain leaf, char juice, spicy savory, which is a little spice. Experiment with different uh, vegetables and make different things. So we'll, see, we'll probably have this for a few more weeks. Cool. So they have their standard flavors here, and then this is one they make like every couple months, they'll have a different micro batch with a different flavor, so it's something new for you to try. Uh, these are in, sold in uh, smaller containers uh, for a little less money. I like the large container, they're definitely better value, but... Mmm. Woo! Lights up your mouth. That'll definitely light up one of my salad dressings uh, once I put it in there. To learn more about Braska and Brine, check out their website, braskaandbrine.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode learning about my two favorite farmers markets. If you are living in LA, you definitely want to visit them. Another way I like to get produce in Los Angeles is visit the Los Angeles Wholesale Produce Terminal. Check the link down below uh, for how you can go to the produce terminal and buy produce wholesale. I always encourage you guys to shop your farmers market first. The produce is going to be fresher, it's going to be local, you're going to be able to talk to the farmers at the wholesale produce terminal, yes, the stuff's really cheap and you can get a lot of organic stuff, uh, you know, but farmers markets are always the best and even better than the wholesale produce terminal and local farmers markets is growing local in your backyard or your front yard. I want to encourage all you guys to grow your own food, especially if you live in LA, Southern California, you could easily grow food all year round and I don't know why you guys aren't doing it. You're going to save so much money on greens, you're going to eat a higher quality produce, it's going to taste better and there's nothing like picking and eating some stuff that you grew yourself. I like to call it pride of growership. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the darn best.